Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Pure Zodiac deck again, post-March 31st, 2017 ban list restrictions. The restriction that puts Rat Pier to 2, and all that sort of nonsense. And again, this is one of those games that I played where it was literally like right after the list dropped, and I was like, Pure Zoo is probably still very much a deck. And I didn't even figure out the Fusion Substitute combos, or any of like the Optimum Rat combos yet. I was literally just playing the deck... Uh, in the form and like the way that I thought that it would be like best suited and so without like the fusion sub combo and stuff like that like the deck definitely like is very subpar compared to what it is capable of doing with access to Luna Light Black Sheep and Fusion Substitute but the deck is still capable of like decent plays and f as far as like what you're like capable of doing as far as like just toolboxing your way into certain cards but I drew the one of Maxi and I drew Imperial Order and I drew the loyal Tuck Tomborg that always finds its way to your hand and I've got a whip tail in my hand I've got a thoroughblade under my Dryden't uh, because I cycled the uh, the whip tail or the uh, the rep here out of my hand um, with the thoroughblade that I summoned and then uh, just kind of went from there basically uh, it was just it was really simple how uh, how things went but so from here he uh, tries to summon his Harmon deck. He's playing 60 card Infernoids, and that's a deck that I actually think got hurt a lot by the uh, by the limitation of uh, semi the semi limitation of Rat rather, because it cuts the number of starter cards on that deck down by a significant amount. Like that deck actually needed the three Rats uh, if you actually like think about it, because of the fact that like sure you can have Barrage and you can have Terra Top and you can get it, but you have to play like multiple Whip Tails and stuff like that in order to give yourself another normal summon that you can do to make your Kagetsuchi, so it really hinders like the starter cards that deck has access to, but it doesn't hurt it too much, but it definitely hurt it like in a significant amount as far as like what your starter cards can be. Like your starter cards can't be rat anymore. Like so you lost like rat as a starter card and you lost Tinky as a starter card. Because even the fusion substitute combos uh, that I'm aware of at least, uh, involving all this stuff, uh, you don't get access into Kagetsuchi plays. Um, as far as like as far as what I'm aware of like essentially but so I flip up that Imperial order uh, and he tries to use an Atondal to attack me and I go and put my whip tail under the Dryden but I rev I like recognize that my tanky is being negated so it will not be bigger than a Tondal. so I just decide to uh, to uh, do the uh, Stormy Mirror Force on it and just save myself the trouble but from here uh, the imagination had been negated he uses a void feast that he had sending his imagination to grave getting access to his uh, double decatron and a shjete so that he can uh, he can basically make level 8 and he can have two negations uh, so that's basically all that we're uh, really dealing with here as far as uh, as far as things that we have to um, have to address uh, so he's using his decatron effects to dump and I'm using a dryden here before the uh, decatron has a chance to dump deviate so it can't negate it that way I can get one of the decatrons off the board so that it, I'm not having to deal with as many negations because I'm perfectly fine dealing with just like a Deviati negate. I'm perfectly fine dealing with that. I don't think there's anything that I should really be worrying about as far as just a lone Deviati. Uh, but he does still get the dump. So I do a quick check to see which one uh, actually ended up on the Decatron and it is Deviati. So I'm like, okay, that's that's good. That's fine. I still have my normal summon and he did tribute that Decatron off with his uh, Shjet so that he would be able to banish my Rat Pierre that is engraved. And then also just, you know, to get value out of the Decatron uh, so that, like, because it's getting popped off the Dryden anyway. But so I normal summon the Takatom board because it has attack points uh, and attack over his two monsters. Uh, and then basically just uh, don't really have much else to do other than to start bolstering up my board uh, with, like, things. I know he has a Tondal in hand, and I know that he has multiple ways to summon uh, things. Like, he has multiple ways to, uh, to summon Infernoids because he does have access to things in uh, Grave. So, I just make double Dryden, and the reason I make double Dryden here is because I have Instant Fusion and Tinky in hand. So I do have a follow-up play the next turn. The only issue is that my Imperial Order is negating my uh, my potential Instant Fusion and my Tinky. Uh, so, like, the reason I made double Dryden was because I know that he's going to go for Anunku. That's, like, the go-to play. Um, all he has in hand is a Tondal, so if he draws something like that, grass looks greener, or, um, or, uh, the grass tastes greener, what, what, I don't even remember what TCG name ended up being, uh, um, but I think it is that grass looks greener, uh, but, uh, if he drew into that, then I just lose to that, 100%, but if he's just trying to summon an Anunku, I can use one Dryden't to pop the Anunku, and then the second Dryden't, before it dies, can pop my Imperial Order, because I can't turn that off. Um, I, I can't turn that off by just not paying for it 
it's mandatory to pay for it now it's with its new errata. Uh, so I do that. I use the Dridents to pop my Imperial Order and then pop his Anunku. That way, all he really has access to as far as summoning is the Atondal that I know in, is in his hand because he just like emptied his grave of Infernoid cards, and he would have to banish his Anunku and his Deviate in order to summon that uh, Atondal. And then from there, I would be able to Instant Fusion for Norden, and I would be able to try to bring back a card. Uh, but then, like it would just it would uh, it would change like certain things of how the deck had to like uh, how I had to answer his board uh, rather because I would have to like deal with the DD Crow effect, but I could do I could deal with that by just tanking for a level four and then normal summoning it. But he ended up drawing another Infernoid, so he just banishes it in order to summon uh, Deviate, um, gets my Tinky off the board, and then attacks me with it. Uh, so from here, I just go Tinky into a Whip Tail, and uh, and this just this just seems easy. It just seems so simple and so easy. Uh, so simple and clean, rather, uh, because I'm just able to get Whiptail, I'm able to put it under a Broad Bull, attack, and bait the uh, Deviate um, with uh, with the Broad Bull. Now, it, you could argue that I could have done that with Dryden't, uh, like put a Dryden on top and then tried to pop the Deviate and that would have baited it, but uh, I just want to conserve resources in that in that manner. Like, I don't want like Dryden's being gone, and as well as I think there's no Dryden's left in my extra deck, I think I literally only play two of each uh, Zooxies in this build. Uh, because like I said, this was before I this was filmed before I figured out like the fusion substitute combos like still existed. This was filmed literally like within an hour of the list going up, and I was like, oh, this deck's still playable. Time to time to work with this um, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but so he top decks that grass looks greener, and I just surrender to it. There's there's no way that I'm going to be able to deal with that in any way. Um, I can't deal with with the top deck grass. There's that's. Mm. I'm just, I can't. I can't deal with that in any way. <laughs> he got to mill like 10 Infernoids, and it just, it, it was not something I was going to even waste time dealing with, uh, because it was just that clutch top deck. I'd been playing that entire game under the assumption of all he has to do is like run out of Infernoids, and I win, and I'd gotten to that point. If he was legitimately completely out of Infernoids, he had a lone Deviate in Graveyard that was unsummonable. And so if he had drawn one Infernoid, even if that one Infernoid like, that he had drawn had been Decatron, it would have been impossible to summon Deviate again, unless he had drawn another Infernoid later, uh, because Decatron obviously would have fueled for uh, for one, and then when it died, it would have fueled for two. Um, but he top decked that Grass Licks Uriner, and so that was that was basically it. Can't do anything about that. Uh, but so as you can see, I'm not really like doing optimal zoo combos here, um, because of the fact that, again, not really too, like... Can, like uh, I hadn't really put a lot of thought into it in terms of uh, in terms of how these uh, are meant to be structured because of the fact that I haven't implemented fusion substitute into the list, all that sort of stuff. This is literally just me herdering my way with the Zodiac Beast deck, and it's still functioning on a decent enough axis to be uh, usable. But so I make a I make just a horrible play here, and I make Emerald first, and I'm like, oh well, we can salvage this by popping this leftover Raffi here, and then using the Emerald to. Um, to shuffle back stuff, so shuffling back uh, the rap here and then two of the XCs. Um, I draw into a uh, Solemn Strike and a Dimensional Barrier, so like Solemn Strike is really the only thing that's going to be like relevant there. Dimensional Barrier is not going to be super relevant, and because it's not super relevant, I just keep it in my hand to be like a discard for Twin Twister, and that way I can still use Whip Tail under my Dryden. But so he starts off with Twin Twister discarding a uh, what looks like a Tondal and uh, hitting my Twin Twister and hitting my, I believe, Forbidden Chalice? Um, if I remember correctly, like this, this build looks legitimately like a pure zoo deck out of like YCS Seattle territory, uh, but it just has one less rapier in it, and it's working fine. Uh, but so he goes to special an entra, uh, and obviously I can't let that slide. He's gonna bounce my uh, my Drancia, and that's not gonna be good. Uh, so from there, I just uh, I just let the uh, I just let the stuff just happen, <laughs> essentially um, in the form of popping his uh, his entra, and then. Striking the Decatron, even though I know he has access to a Tondal Engrave, uh, it's going to be a bit of an issue. But he does know that I have Whip Tail in hand, so he's not going to be able to attack both monsters and get away with it. And so, luckily, he sees that. Uh, he sees that as he attacks. He attacks my uh, Emerald first, because if he wants to trigger the effect, he could attack over my Dryden for a good bit of damage. Um, I could put Whip Tail under it and then banish as a Tondal. But then from there, it would just kind of just be like anyone's guess on how this is going to function and go. But so, my board is just a lone Dryden. I draw into a Tinky. So, you know, engine cards, those are pretty good. 
Uh, using Tinky to add a card to my hand um, usually is going to be something that has high attack points so that you can start putting it under the Zoo Exceses and giving them uh, giving them some stackable uh, point values. Uh, but so from here, I just go into a Borbo off of my Thoroughblade. I keep the Thoroughblade, um, like I use the Thoroughblade to not rotate out my uh, Whiptail. I leave the Whiptail in hand because it just seems uh, better that way. Uh, but then I have to, I get to use the uh, Broadbull to search for another Whiptail as well. Uh, so I have like multiple access into just banishing that Atondal and not having to worry about it literally for the rest of the game. And that's like the last Infernoid I think that he has access to um, as, far as, a, as far as a name goes. So it's just really good for me at this point. And I've got two Whiptails as well. So I'm able to put a Whiptail under the Broadbull and then I'm able to put a Whiptail under the Dryden to refuel it for a material. Uh, so like it just it's it's really good all over the place because of the fact that I'm gonna be able to put Whiptail under this Dryden and then I'm gonna be able to make a second Dryden. So I'm not even like recycling resources, but I'm just outpacing and out resourcing my opponent because of the fact that like my engine is still like the zoo engine is still a good toolbox. Uh, that's that's the thing that people just don't seem to want to really like take the time to understand is that it's still a very good toolbox and Tiger Mortar just gets to be used to like rotate the materials from your graveyard back under it to make your stuff bigger. So as you can see, I've got a huge Dryden. A pair of them, in fact. They are both like 2,900 attacks. So they are both gigantic Drydents. And they both get to draw cards. And so the only card in his graveyard is Twin Twister, and he has one set, which we have no idea what that is. It's probably something like Void Feast, and he has no way to get into a, like a Void Spell or Trap. No, it's a Twin Twister. Never mind. He drew Void Feast. Uh, but so he uses the Twin Twister that's set discarding Void Feast. And then I just call Ritual just for, you know, the disrespect points. I draw a combo, which is all right. Um, the combo, like, actually does fuel. Uh, it does fuel this deck uh, a fair bit. And I, then I realized that I also had game in, in this instance, uh, but I forgot that there was an extra Broad Bull in my extra deck uh, because I had shuffled it back earlier um, off of the Emerald, and I never used the second Broad Bull again. Uh, but uh, I could have summoned Broad Bull over one of those Drydents and added, added the third Whiptail, because the third Whiptail is in my deck. Uh, and it would have allowed me to uh, would have allowed me to have game there, because he's at 1,000 life, and Whiptail would have increased one of the attack points of the monsters by 1,200. So there is that. Uh, but so, from here, I just get to attack with my two super-powered Drydents. Like, look at how big these damn things are. Look at how massive they are. Uh, like, it is... Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I cannot express how like weird it is to attack with Drydents that are that big. Uh, but basically, this one is only a two-game video. I messed up in the recording, uh, essentially, so I've lost a game and I won a game. But regardless, it's still a decent enough video to uh, put up, so that's what we will leave it at there. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Let me know what your thoughts are down below of the pure Zoo deck of Zoo being Splashes and Engine with the, you know, the Fusion Substitute combos that I put up on my channel yesterday and all that sort of stuff that still allow you to gather resources rather quickly. And let me know what you think about the Infernoid deck and how you th think the like Zoo cards play with the Infernoid deck uh, in general because I think that the deck is really like hard-pressed to try and access Kagetsuchi now, um, especially you know with, uh, with the things that have happened. But, I mean, the Fusion Substitute combos are still available to the Infernoid list itself, allowing it to like draw extra cards, which could allow it to draw into its starter cards like Void Imagination, uh, void Vanishment and uh, like that grass looks greener or left arm offering stuff like that So there's potential for both of those But anyways, I've already said thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below But definitely be sure to like and subscribe for more content Check out the links in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages if you want to support the channel directly and help support me uh, Then Patreon is the way to go and there's a monthly giveaway going on at the end of every month this month It is for a box of Duelist Saga or whatever, like, the sealed, like, master, like, amount of it is. I believe it comes in box form, but regardless, there's going to be a significant amount of Duelist Saga um, given away at the end of this month to my Patreon uh, donors, as well as you get possible access to my personal Discord server. That's one of the reward tiers. But other than that, if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business. If you're looking to acquire cards I played in this video, then definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as usual, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.